Hi, so today I'm going to be talking about the calcium induced calcium release mechanism that's involved in the with uh, it's involved in the cardiac cycle uh, regarding cardiac muscle. Um, to begin, uh, I guess I will start with discussing uh, some of the key components, namely calcium is a, a big component of this entire cycle. Uh, and to begin, I guess we'll just start with saying that right here, as you can see with my cursor, we have the cardiac action potentials, which is you know similar to the action potentials as discussed earlier in the year, uh, coming from stimulus. In this case, it's cardiac, uh, which is, involves the heart. Um, once these cardiac action potentials travel along the, uh, the T-tubule and eventually get to the uh, DHPR, which is the dihydropyridine receptor, um, that is a voltage-gated um, calcium channel, and once that actually the action potentials reach it, it opens up and allows calcium to go into the, the dihydropyridine receptor. After that calcium enters into the intracellular space, uh, it ends up inevitably binding to the ryanidine receptor. Uh, and this ryanidine receptor, which is connected to, as you can see, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, um, the binding of calcium to that floods the intracellular space with even more calcium. Now, as you can see, this calcium floods out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum via the ryanidine receptor down into the intracellular space where it inevitably connects up with the troponin, which is connected to the actin and myosin. Now, the second that the calcium binds up with troponin, it causes the actin and the myosin to contract, uh, basically uh, 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 stimulating muscle contraction. After the muscle contraction has been is completed, the calcium needs to leave this uh, the binding side of the troponin. So as you see, as we move over here to the right side of the diagram, the calcium is now beginning to leave the troponin. The actin, which is the two uh, half parentheses here surrounding the myosin, begins to like alleviate a little bit or uncontract, if, if you say. Um, and the calcium begins to leave the troponin. Now, because the calcium is still within the intracellular space, it has multiple places that it needs to go to clean itself up. First and foremost, it can go back to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, where exists a calcium ATPase pump, which basically allows the calcium to be pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Another word for this is called the circle uh, the, the circle pump. So. The calcium leaves troponin to get back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum after contraction via either the calcium ATPase pump, otherwise known as the circa pump. Now the other mechanism for the calcium to kind of clean itself out of the intracellular space is to unbind from the troponin and go up back towards the, uh, go up towards and connect up with a, so what is it, a, uh, a sodium calcium exchanger and in this case basically the calcium is allowed to exchange with sodium so that the calcium can go back out to the extracellular space and sodium can enter with into the intracellular space now obviously having potassium sodium levels sodium levels within the intracellular space can affect areas of depolarization so we kind of need to get the sodium back out and we have options to do such um, as we've discussed earlier, we call one of these mechanisms the K plus, or the, uh, the sodium potassium ATPase pump, or what we call it in this class, the pumpkin or pump KN. So in this case, the sodium that has been pumped in in exchange for the calcium is now pumped back out to be a, a pumpkin or uh, sodium potassium ATPase pump. So the sodium, as, as you follow the cursor, is pumped back out, while as you see the pump KN, potassium is pumped back in. Furthermore, if you have an excess of potassium and need to further change levels within the extra and intracellular spaces to maintain polarization or depolarization as needed, there are calcium channels or uh, leak channels that can just consistently leak calcium back out as needed. Um, hopefully this was a good uh, overview of the calcium induced calcium release mechanism that is a highly benefit or a highly required uh, mechanism throughout uh, the cardiac muscle uh, lessons. Thanks for listening.